Today we're going to talk about Light Tracer, which is a web-based GPU renderer that you can use for free to render your projects, whether you are a professional or a beginner. This render engine was created by two developers, Dennis and Danila. For a long time, Light Tracer render engine had only been an online version, but now it also has a standalone offline rendering software. The web version remains free and adds supports for Google Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft Edge browsers. The web version of the engine allows the user to upload an OBG model and have it progressively render in the browser using the computer's GPU. You can add mesh lights, HDRI environments, and create two-layer physically-based materials. The send alone or the offline version features improved when it comes to performance and several more features, including AI denoisers, custom backplates, a scene inspector, mesh healing, and more. Light Tracer is completely free if you want to use it online, and the offline version is paid, but it is very affordable. If you want to check it out with 14 days of free trial, you can find links in the description. So why use Light Tracer? First of all, you can use Light Tracer to create amazing renders in different industries, in addition to allowing you to quickly produce amazing visuals for automotive projects, product designs, architectural visualization, jewelry projects, and more. But most importantly, Light Tracer is a very easy and user-friendly 3D rendering software, and its real-time workflow is very intuitive and allows you to create amazing-looking images of your 3D models with physically correct materials. If you have used Marmoset Toolbag Real-Time Render Engine before, it is very similar and very fast as well. Also, one of the important things about Light Tracer is that it reacts to all scene changes interactively, making designing and rendering your products an easy and fun process. All the adjustments of materials, lights, and project positions are immediately visible as real-time feedback in the viewport, which always displays the final rendering result. Because Light Tracer works in real-time, it has a highly optimized ray tracing engine that provides real-time feedback to all your changes, and dynamic modifications of large scenes is made possible by rapid updates of the acceleration structures. For this to work properly, you need a computer that has somewhat a good graphics card. Light Tracer is compatible and can run probably on any GPU or graphics card, both discrete NVIDIA or AMD GPUs, and integrated Intel or AMD GPUs. The graphics cards are better be produced after 2013, and to make sure it is gonna work properly, you have to download the latest drivers. Light Tracer software uses progressive rendering so that the noisy preview progressively refines to the final image. You can stop the rendering when the noise level is low enough. When it comes to materials, Light Tracer features a simple but robust two-layer PBR model. It allows simulating realistic surfaces such as metal, paint, wood, stone, rubber, glass, gemstone, plastic, and so on. For lighting, Light Tracer is mainly designed to use image-based lighting, and you can also add your own high dynamic range images to the scene if you want to convey a certain type of lighting or mood to your renders. Alright, so this is the website of Light Tracer. Right now, we're gonna try to see how the web version works, and also if you want to test the offline version, you can do this because they're gonna give you a 14 day trial. And if you want to purchase the software, you can do this as well. First of all, we're gonna test the web version. As you can see, it seems like any other software. There are some tools and panels on the right and on the left. And right now, we're gonna see how this works in real time. First of all, we have this object here in the center that you gotta use in order to test materials, lighting, and everything else. And um, here you can see that we have we have the ability to turn on and off or hide and bring back our elements in the scene. We also have other tools here for lighting and HDRI images and everything else. And also here we have properties of materials and lighting we have the library, we have rendering, and we have view settings as well. First of all, I want to test the library. First of all, it's going to take some time to load. And once it does that, we can start trying our materials. Uh, we can actually select one of these and just drop it over here. And we will see it taking place immediately in real time. We can also, we can just throw it here and the same thing will happen. We can see the results taking place immediately. Uh, if we want to choose or use other material, we can do this as well. 
it is very simple. It's like using a software such as Substance Painter or Marmoset or something like that. Also, if we want to do something else, we can, uh, I want to show you actually how to import a model. We can do this from here. We can load uh, a model. We can choose this one here and we're going to replace it. And as you can see, this model is way more complicated than the previous default one. And the denoising operates smoothly and very quickly. If we stop the, um, the object or the rendering start denoising, and once it is done, we can see the clear image of our render. And to see the final result or take an image of it, we can do this from here. It will download real quick and we will see it on our windows. This is how it looks like. Some of the things I wanted to see together or try here is changing some of the lighting or scene parameters and settings. For example, here we can delete the background. We can use a gradient background depending on which color we want, whether it be like we can change this color to something like green or red or yellow or blue even depending on what you need. Also, we can use panoramas or HDRI images. We can manage uh, the image or the HDRI from here. I personally probably like this because it shows more details and it is way more realistic and the lighting is strong enough. But if you want to choose or select something else, you can do this as well. For example, something like this. Or you can use something like this. But I would say that this one is better for me. Okay, as you can see, this is looking good and probably the lighting is a little bit too bright. But we can change that if we want to. We can change the power scale from here. If you want to bring it down or take it to insane level where it seems like a supernova exploded or superstar or atomic bomb or something like that. And if you want to control the camera, we're going to go to view and change some of the values here to zoom in and out or change the angle of the camera. You can do this from here as well, but uh, you need to change the values according to your needs. We can also make a turnable of our character using some of the settings here and parameters. We can actually turn it around and create or make a video. But unfortunately, this option is only available in the software or the offline version. So what if I want to upload and render my own models? Uh, the answer is going to be very quick. We're going to do it the same way we've done this one here. And we're going to go to load our model. I think I'm going to change this to Y because this is what works for me right now. As you can see, the model does not look that great. And it is completely untextured. And there are no materials on top of it or on it. So the first thing we're going to do is go into properties. And we're going to select the whole model, as you can see. And we're going to select the length, the materials, and the stuff that we're going to use. To make sure that we're going to use the, 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 the maps we created in software such as Blender or software such as Substance Painter, we're going to go over here to textures. We need albedo or color map. We need metalness, roughness, sometimes emission. But most importantly, we need a normal map because it contains all the details and everything else, especially knowing that this is going to be a game ready model, this one here. So first of all, I am going to bring the albedo or the color map, just select it and load a new map. I'm going to select the color map and it will appear automatically and immediately on our, on our model. And if we want to upload or bring the, um, the normal map, we can do this as well. Choose it over here and voila, here it is. As you can see, it adds a lot of details and all the necessary things that should appear on our model. Also, we need metalness. Okay, awesome. This can prove to be extremely important. For example, if you want to sell 3D models and you want to show clients uh, your work and uh, on the preview images. Also, if you want to show the render results real quick for clients as well, if, if you are doing freelance work or something like that. Or if you want to put these images and your uh, the models you created on your portfolio. And we're going to also bring the roughness. 
load the new image or the new map. And here we go. So this is uh, how the software works or this render engine works briefly because there are a lot of things that we did not mention. Those are kind of the basics that you need to know about this render engine. And if you want to learn more, there are some resources out there. Actually, it is very easy. You're going to be able to learn it in a matter of probably a day or two. You're going to be able to know everything about it. And it is super fast and easy to use. So if you are interested in the offline version, it is also very similar with additional features. As you can see, this is uh, the, the offline version. It is not very complicated or something different. It is the same, but with additional features and more power. I recommend you check out this amazing render engine. It is really fast and works in real time and is going to cover a lot of your needs. If you want to take a look at it, you can find the links in the description. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.